So let me ask you a question. Do you like movies? Do you like popcorn? Do you like popcorn with your movies? Well, I can answer yes to all three of those. The thing is what I don't like is I often get popcorn kernels that don't pop completely and then I don't like to throw them back into the bag or the bowl that I've got my popcorn in. So I turn a small bowl. This one's made from a small maple burl. I quite like it. Does the job just fine. I set it beside me at the movie, fill it with my kernels. When it's done, they're there and I can throw them into the recycling, the compost. Now my wife has decided she'd like one too. And I have to be honest, this was her idea. So I better make one for her and then I might as well make a couple of extras because we often have people over to watch a movie or listen to music with us. And I have a bunch of small pieces of maple. Some spalted, some not. Some would have to be an end grain bowl. So I'm going to see what I can come up with here for another couple of bowls. Something like this one. This one's four inches in diameter, two inches high. I'm not going to try to duplicate it, but I'll see what I can come up with. So stick around and let's see what kind of work I can do today. I think the first one I'll try is an end grain bowl. Just get this damp so that grain pops a little. It's got some beautiful grain in it. Not sure what it's going to be like. It's off center. The pith is right here. I'm going to draw a circle here, put this on the band saw, cut it round, then I'm going to put it on the lathe, see what kind of bowl I can come up with. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the blank that will match my woodworm screw in my chuck. I'm just going to thread that on there. And my next step will be to turn this round, start to shape the bottom, and I'm going to put a recess instead of a tenon in this one and use my jaws in expansion mode. The very minimum that the jaws will fit into is a two inch recess, so I'll probably make it two and a sixteenth or two and one eighth. Now first I'll just turn this round. I'll be turning this at 1000 RPM. I have my divider set at one inch. I'm going to put the right leg into the very center which I have marked and then bring the left leg over to scribe the line for a two inch diameter circle. I have the tool rest high enough that this is actually pointing slightly down. If I were to lower the tool rest and have it come up like this, it would be very easy to get a catch there. need to clean out that recess. I'll use my parting tool for most of that. When using the parting tool like this, I like to sight along the shaft and make sure it's running parallel with the bedway so I get a straight cut. I'll straighten this out with a square nose scraper. And I believe that's deep enough for my jaws. There's a bit more checking on this end than I had realized when I first looked at it. So I'm going to shave some of that off and then redo this recess a little deeper.
Well, this wasn't going well, so I've sharpened my bowl gouge. And actually, I sharpened my spindle gouge at the same time. We'll see if I can do a better job here. It's amazing the difference a sharp tool can make. Not that it's perfect. I'll need some sanding board time on this, but it's much improved. This blank is still about four and a half inches in diameter. I've set these calipers to just over four inches. So when it starts to just fall over there, I will know that I am very close to finished. It'll be a matter of finishing cuts and sanding to get it to the four inches. And when I'm turning this, this is end grain, which means the grain is running this way, parallel to the bed. So I need to cut from the center down this way, shaping it so that I am not going into the grain. Otherwise, I'm just going to get a catch or get very jagged cutting. I need to do a little bit of filling here. To fill this, I'm going to first use some thin CA glue and just saturate it a bit. Then I'm going to take some sawdust and to accentuate the dark, I'm going to use some walnut sawdust I have. I'll just put it on the end of this, drip it in there and then force it in. Then I'll dribble some more thin CA glue over it and give it time to set. I'll give that time to set up and then come back and see just how well it's going to work when I sand that off. I have the shape that I want this bowl to be at, so I'm just going to do some shear scraping to clean this up. That's about as good as I'm going to get with that, so I'm going to sand the rest. On the bottom, I'm just going to use the corner of my skew chisel to add some rings in here. And I'm going to use my sanding board just to sand lightly this area right here. I have it sanded to 600. I think that's plenty. This is just going to be coated with mineral oil eventually. So now I'm going to reverse it and turn the inside of the bowl. All right, now I want to put this on in expansion mode, which means these jaws are going to spread inside the recess. And this lip is not very thick. 
so I don't want to overdo it or I could snap it. I'm going to push it over the jaws, hold it with my thumb on the center hole to try to keep it centered, and then tighten just until I can feel it. Now, if that doesn't turn, if I can't turn it by hand, it should be tight enough. I'm going to give it just a hair more, and that should be good. Appears to be centered. So now I'm going to start turning out the inside. I'm also going to bring it back a little bit. This is much deeper than I want it to be. I only want it to be about two inches. So I'll be taking some off of that as well. I want the bowl to be very close to the same depth as this original one. So I'm just going to use that to mark this. I'll mark it about a sixteenth of an inch deeper. As I said earlier, I'm not trying to duplicate anything. Let's see what kind of luck I have taking that down. I've put a cone live center into the woodworm screw hole. It's not in there very tight, it's just to add a little bit of support as I try turning this down. I'm going to switch to my spindle gouge now. It has a much longer profile. I'll be able to get in there better to remove this knob. And there it's out of there. I'll continue hollowing out the bowl now. I'm going to try cleaning that out with one of Andre Martel's hook tools. I've had this for quite a while, never did get around to using it until I was finally given some expertise, some guidance from Andrew Glazebrook. Andrew is not a real well-known instructor just yet outside of Alberta for the most part, but he's a very talented instructor and turner. And he gave me some tips on using this which at least has got me going, although I'm far from an expert just yet. The hook tool is designed for using on end grain, and it's usually used on wet wood, so I'm not sure how well it's going to work on something as dry as this. I had my tool rest a little too close, so it was catching on the set screw. I'm going to just move this out a bit and give that another try. I think that'll be better.
it's much improved where, over what it was. And these are not as bad as what they look when I feel them. So I'm going to just try sanding this out. And that's it sanded to 600 grit. I'm quite happy with it. It's got some beautiful grain in it. Can't ask for a lot more than that. Now I'm going to coat it with mineral oil and I'll call it finished. Well, there it is. It's not an award winner, but I'm quite happy with it. The mineral oil really made the grain pop. I think it's a pretty little wool. I'm quite satisfied with it. Now, one thing I need to do is I need to take some more time and practice with the hook tool. I've got a long way to go to master this or even to get decently good at it. Once I get a little better on that, maybe I'll do a video showing how it works. I'll put a link in the description box down below the video so you can check out Andre Martel's site. Show some of his tools and you can uh, do some YouTube checking and find some videos with him in it where he does work with that tool. I think he does a beautiful job. Another thing, I'm going to do a shout out for Daniel Villarino. I've mentioned him before, but I just finished watching one of his videos. His latest one at this time is an hourglass and it's phenomenal. He does beautiful work, he's a great teacher. If you haven't looked him up, please do. If you're not subscribed to him and you see this, you'll probably want to. He's well worth checking out. Daniel, you're amazing. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, got something out of this. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day in your shop and be safe. Thanks again, bye now.